Hey, it's Dan, and in this video, we're going to replace the front brake rotors on this BMW S1000RR. This job's about a 2 out of 5 for difficulty, should take you less than an hour to finish. We will need to remove the front wheel, that means that both calipers need to come off. We'll remove the pinch bolts from the front axle, remove the axle, remove the wheel, and that's going to give us access to each of the rotors. So the first thing we'll do is remove the right hand caliper. These are 13 millimeter bolts. I like to make sure that I put the same bolt back in the same hole, so I usually put this one towards the bottom. And this one on the top. And the caliper will just slide right off. It's okay to let these hang a little bit, just make sure not to tug on it or let it catch on anything. Also make sure that you don't touch the front brake lever while the caliper is out. This could damage it or actually push the pistons out of there. So don't touch the brake and just let it be over here. So the left side is also 13 millimeters. So here, just watch out for the ABS sensor cable. And again, be sure not to touch the front brake while the calipers are off the bike. So next up, we'll loosen the two pinch bolts. You only need to loosen the right hand side, leave the other side alone. And this is a T45 pin. You will need to alternate them a little bit and make sure that you're at a point where you can freely turn them just with your hand and there's no more resistance. That means that the bottom clamp of the fork is not squeezing the axle anymore, which means that you're able to unscrew it. So for the next step, you'll either need to use a large hex bit, or in my case, I have a homemade tool that I made using a bolt, a lock washer, and two nuts that I tightened together really tight. And then all I'm doing is using a 24 millimeter socket, insert this this way, and that's gonna allow me to unscrew the axle. So if you don't have a 24 millimeter hex bit, this is a cheap and easy way to make that happen without having to buy a special tool. And here, you're gonna to wanna to lift up the wheel just a little bit to reduce the friction on the axle, and then just pull it out. So anytime you have the front wheel off the bike, be careful not to damage the rotors. So don't set it on a hard surface like a garage concrete floor. I usually like to use either an old towel or an old bath mat. In this case, I'm using the foam that came inside of the box with the new rotors. It fits it nicely, gives me a good working area. So next up, we're gonna remove the right hand rotor. It's gonna be using a T30 bit. So these screws can be in there pretty tightly. You may need to use a breaker bar or a larger wrench just to break them free. So the new rotors should be marked for the right unit and the left unit. So on these, these are Rashi branded and there is a dash R on it. So I know that this is going to go on the right hand side of the motorcycle. So be sure to match them up. So this looks okay. And also you wanna make sure that the stamping is actually facing the outside of the bike, not the inside of the wheel. So if 
for the new bolts. You always want to start them off by hand. Be careful. Uh, don't rush this. This should go right in by your hand. Uh, don't try to get the wrench to it right away or you might end up stripping it. If you strip these guys, you might end up having to buy a new wheel. So not worth rushing. And if things aren't lined up properly, you may need to rotate the rotor just a little bit to get them to fit nicely. So once that's in, I'll just use the bit to give it a couple more turns. And once I'm confident that I'm on the thread and not cross-threading these guys, I'll go ahead and use the wrench to finish it up. And now that we've got all the bolts hand tightened, we're going to torque them to 19 newton meters. So it's important to crisscross them to make sure that you don't put too much pressure on any one side before the other side is tightened up. So next up we'll do the left hand side. The only difference is that we have this ABS ring on there which will come off when you remove the rotor. So it might be a good idea just to take a closer look at the ABS ring, make sure there's no dirt or it's not damaged in any way. This guy still looks fine. And for the new rotor, double check that it's the left hand side. Left side of the bike is the one that has ABS sensor, so we're good to go. Um, and just line that up. Make sure that the stamping or the branding is on the outside so they could see it from the wheel. And we'll go ahead and replace the bolts. Take your time to align this correctly. You may need to jiggle the rotor. And we'll go around and hand tighten these one more time and then we'll torque them to 19 newton meters. And once all the bolts are actually touching the surface of the rotor, we'll go around and torque them. So 19 newton meters. And now we can reinstall the front wheel back onto the bike. One thing you want to watch out for is to make sure that the ABS sensor ring is on the left hand side of the bike. Uh, the other thing, there's a little spacer over here inside of the left fork, so make sure you don't knock that out. So take your time here, make sure they're aligned the wheel. You'll need to lift it up just a little bit as you slide the axle in.
and now we'll just tighten it to 50 newton meters. And next up, we're going to retighten the pinch bolts using a T45 bit here. Um, these will be tightened to 19 newton meters. The trick to doing this is you got to go back and forth a couple of times. Uh, they recommend at least three times. So, so we'll tighten this one. Then the other one. And then we'll go back and forth a couple more times. And finally, for the last step, we'll reinstall the calipers. Now, be mindful, the new rotors are probably a little thicker than the ones that you removed. That means that you'll probably need to pry open the brake pads just a little bit to give yourself enough room to reinstall these guys. I like using a flat blade screwdriver. Just be careful here not to damage your brake pads. So if you insert it here and then just rotate it, you'll feel the pistons within the caliper going back into it and the brake pads separating. And now we'll gently work the caliper in, make sure that the rotor gets between the pads, insert them onto the studs. For the brake uh, caliper bolts, I like to use a little bit of a blue thread locker. So remember which bolt came from the top and from the bottom. will be a 13 millimeter. And we'll torque this to 38 newton meters. So that's all there is to it. Thanks so much for watching. Hope you found this useful and I'll see you next time.